Apex Season 9, or just Legacy for marketing purposes, has burst into the world, and I can confidently say that this is the best Apex update so far. Despite the servers initially being less reliable than that kid in year 3, promising he'll pay you back that 20 cents after lunch, Apex actually reached a new concurrent player peak on the first day of the season. For both new and returning players, there's really never been a better time to jump in and get angry at Wraith mains, who have discovered that their disconnect speedruns don't even need them to leave the dropship. Their kind never cease to fascinate and amaze the rest of the player base. The biggest addition this season is the arena's game mode, which can be best described as Valorant, if it was fun. Two teams of three fight in a set enclosed space and are required to purchase weapons, abilities, and supplies before each round. If you can excuse the blatant branding, the entire mode could be described as Apex without the bullshit, as it strips away a lot of the downtime, doing things like navigating, looting, and talking shit with your squad, and condenses the entire experience into fair fights that won't be cleaned up by a third party. As the rounds go on, everyone's armor gets better, and you can start investing more into comfort pick weapons, with the kinds of attachments you'd prefer, kind of like simulating each round of a regular game. Perhaps even more so than the battle royale portion of the game, arenas really does require a full stack to properly coordinate and win. Positioning is everything, and giving your team an artificial numbers advantage by diving on a single player or coordinating a perfect play to stretch the limits of everyone's abilities is the absolute peak of this kind of game mode. As much as I adore the absolute shit out of Titanfall, it never satisfied the need to lean on your team and let them lean on you for help. It's often said that Titanfall pilots would clean the floor with every single Apex legend in the game, but when you can't be an unstoppable force of nature on your own and need to rely on the blood and coordination of your friends, Apex is able to meet or even exceed those heights set by Titanfall. It's taken a really long time, but I'm ready to admit that Apex is hitting the high notes that I always wished it could reach. Tied with arenas, as the coolest thing they've added to Apex, is Valkyrie, the new legend, and daughter to Viper, who you'll remember from the best boss fight in Titanfall 2. Valkyrie is possibly the highest mobility legend they've released to date, with her jump jets, allowing her to reposition onto high ground whenever she likes, and her ultimate ability, basically turning her into a jump tower for your entire team. Not only that, but she can also launch a missile swarm at the enemy, which does about as much damage as a slap in the face with a wet mop. Like every other legend before release, Valkyrie was branded as overpowered, but that notion quickly faded after players realized that a slow-moving legend floating through the air without cover isn't exactly the hardest shit to bring down. In all honesty, the most overpowered thing about Valkyrie is how fucking cool she is compared to the other legends. I bought that launch bundle day one, because if you're going to vote with your wallet, you might as well be voting for anything even remotely related to Titanfall. Something that is seeing criticism for being too powerful is the new Bocek Compound Bow, a marksman weapon that shoots arrows near silently at peasants who doth dare to claim treasures not destined for thee. The case for being too strong is certainly reasonable, with the weapon being fast firing, dealing as much damage as a sentinel having very little bullet drop over longer range, being able to halt and seamlessly switch between two different hop-ups, and being ridiculously ammo efficient. On the other hand, the bow isn't exactly a forgiving weapon to use, the ammo it takes is unique to the weapon, and therefore one of the rarest to find, and I'd make the controversial argument that due to it being a quiet weapon, players have yet to properly fear its power. I personally tend to trust the developers for balance related changes, so I'll defer to their judgement. Either way, this is by far the most badass weapon they've released to date, and really personifies the more meme weapons that were always the most fun in Titanfall 2. The map changes themselves are quite minimal, but in the context of everything else added, this isn't necessarily bad. It's going to be a sad season without King's Canyon to tuck me in at night, but after a season this big, they'll need some kind of draw for their next big update. I'm expecting the new Plague on Olympus to gradually evolve and take over the map in the coming few seasons, because like every battle royale in the history of the world, maps only tend to get more destroyed.
As for balance changes, it's mostly been good news. Horizon is no longer an overpowered piece of shit. Bangalore's mist has been upgraded to smoke, and Fuse is given double the firepower, after having the lowest win rate of any legend in the previous season. The change for Loba on the other hand, is absolute bullshit, as to compensate for her magic teleportation bracelet working as intended, her ultimate's cooldown timer, is now extended by another 30 seconds. Admittedly, this does seem like an overall improvement for the character, as having the ability to reliably get you out of danger without it being a random dice roll is nice, but overall, this serves as more of an earth to the rest of your team. Assuming you all make it to the end circle, every single person on your team would now potentially have around 6 less high tier loot items than before, which starts to add up over longer matches. With arguably most of Loba's power coming directly from her ultimate, I don't see her win rate improving from this change. I'm happy with every other balance update, but this is a hill I'm willing to die on. On a completely different subject, Apex has recently come under scrutiny for its monetization practices, only a few weeks ago, trying to sell what is essentially just a reskin of an already existing legendary. In this area, I'm somewhat conflicted. As previously mentioned, I'm someone who will vote with their wallet on these matters, and never in a million years will I attempt to buy a fucking reskin for that price, but on the other hand, I do at least appreciate a transparent system of simply buying the shit you want directly, as opposed to getting lucky with a few loot boxes. Furthermore, in our battle pass analysis, which took us 6 fucking months to finally make, Apex Legends was ranked extremely high. In terms of its free track, Apex was ranked second out of all the games we covered, while also taking the silver medal on the leaderboard of best battle pass overall. Even still, it was only beaten by For Honor, which as it turns out, has by far the most consumer friendly battle pass on the market. I'll leave a link to the video in the outro, if you were wondering how we got to our conclusion. Perhaps one of the least talked about aspects of this season has been the implications for the future of Titanfall. From a business perspective, Respawn has shown their hand with the launch of Season 9, as it seems that instead of risking the fragmentation of their considerably large player base with a new game, they would instead opt for a tried and true live service model. If I were a betting man, I don't think we'll be getting Titanfall 3 anytime soon, but rather, Apex will simply incorporate more Titanfall related content into its platform. Arenas is the first step toward this grand plan, as Respawn's experimental approach to game design will very likely lead it to add more Titanfall related element into these more controlled modes into the future. At the very least, I'd be extremely surprised if we didn't see an advanced movement or deathmatch temporary game mode sometime in the next year. I could also see NPC grunts guarding points of interest in the battle royale mode, or even a survival mode a few years later, if the player base is still willing to support the game. With titles, like Call of Duty, still trying to sell very similar games year after year, it makes sense that their competitor should instead just spend their time making their own game, far too big and ambitious to be seen as a comparable alternative, and rather, an ever-present staple in the shooter genre. I'm sad at the realization that Titanfall 3 is likely not going to be a reality anytime soon, but the realization that Apex could turn into everything we've ever wanted from the franchise and more, is enough to be optimistic about the future. Apex has never been better than it is right now, and if you've ever needed an excuse to try it out, or come home to the frontier, this might just be your best opportunity. All I'm saying, is there's a reason Fortnite got that silver medal, 